introduce ourselves again. I'm Reginald Grant. Welcome, athletes. The impact of health on professional athletes and families. We're just going to have a discussion, and and let's start with Marv since he was the uh, the big dog in the room. So, Marv Fleming, just take it away. Give us your perspective and your opinion about the impact of health on professional athletes and their families, and just what you're thinking about now. Well, um, thank you, guys. Um, Mark Fleming from Marina Del Rey. Um, I used to live in Florida when I was a dolphin, but back, I'm yes. back home in, in, in California. Um, you know, if I had a chance to do it all again, I would probably uh, get involved with real estate. Um, <laughs> and, um, athletics was a, um, to me, was a, um, a way to, uh, to go to school, to get an education. And I found out pro professional football was a way that I could make a little money, you know. But I didn't know what, um, you know, that saying they say that um, uh, at the top, you're responsible at the top, you know, for all the things you do. And, and, and if, I had to, if I had the chance to do it all over again, not with your heart or brains i wouldn't play football you know i um i'm i played it because it was it was easy for me to do it was easy for me to to knock people down easy for me to run fast it was easy to do that so i took advantage of that so that i could um um i guess have a, a later in later life have a good have a good life and later in life which i am now i'm sure glad i did uh, but I would never play football again. Football is, every time I see somebody um, hit the ground, just fall down, I know their their brain is being jarred, their body is being jawed, jarred. You know, I don't know if you can see this. They say our, our, our life expects to be this long, you know, or, or this much. But you play football for this long, and you live this long. That's not good, is it? No. I just had one of my um, players just passed away yesterday. They're passing away every year. Uh, about 135 players every year are passing away who play professional football. They didn't get to go the distance, you know, the 80, 90, 95-year-old. Uh, oh, God, that's great. I have friends here in Marina Del Rey. They're 102, and I wish I could be like them when they were 102. But I got my brain um, – a scan and I had like seven black patches of dead cells in my brain and I thought wow what's going on but that's yeah. the bad part the good part is I started doing what is called hyperbaric oxygen I I, I did that for, yeah. I did that for about um I'm still doing it I, I did that for about five years three times a week okay and after I went back and got my uh, another I got another uh, scan, and my um, th those um, when you look at the scan, it shows up and down. You know, um, before there were like 75, 80, um, 60. Wow, what's wrong with that one? But then after I finished my scan, uh, the second scan during hyperbarics, it was like um, 90, 100, 120. Uh, 100, 100, 100, 120, 30, uh, 130. And I said, wow, that's because I had, I was on my way to having uh, early Alzheimer's or dementia. And I'm sure glad that I caught it. I, but I still, I still forget where I put my keys sometimes in the car, you know. Yeah, but, I do that too. <laughs> yeah, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had a chance to do it again, but I did have, I took, I took advantage of it. I probably, I'm going to tell you, I'm probably, of all the football players you've met or hear about, Mark Fleming is probably the most fortunate one ever with a capital E. Now, that's a heavy statement. Yes, ever. And I'll tell, I'll tell you one, I went, off, I went off a cliff in a car, 150 feet um, in college and broke my neck, okay? I broke my neck, and for eight months I had a cast. But I still played, you know, like 12 years, 14 years of professional football after. So that's just one of my 30, I'm writing a book, 
So that's one of my 32 reasons. And they're all wow, wow, you know. <laughs> so anyway, when you, when, if you read my book and see my book, you'll be saying, wow, wow, wow. And so when I play football again, no, never. And so, but I, um, what I happen is I, I am, every dollar I made, every dollar I made, um, I only spent 25 cents of it. Just 25 cents of it. Anyway, so are you guys still with me or are you? We're still We're with here. you. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, I've, been very, I, I've been very, very fortunate. I mean, super fortunate. Okay. I, I look at my life now. I just had a, when my um, teammates passed away yesterday, yeah, he was a, a millionaire plus, plus, plus. Okay. But, uh, but he was in a hospital like, oof. Um, uh, the last three or four years, he was in a hospital probably 75% of the time. And that's no good life. And so right now, um, um, but thanks to football, it got me a career, it got me um, um, education. And, um, and, 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 and where I am right now, I'm one of the happiest guys in the world. But I am practicing social distance, though. I am doing <laughs> I know so, that's hard for you. It is hard. So um, as far as, um, I don't know, um, I was lucky, very lucky. Like I said, I've been the most fortunate one ever. Are there any questions? Um, Mark, no. I do. This is Brandy. Um, starting back from fo football, what year did you start playing football? And obviously, it had to be some sort of a passion for you at that time. <laughs> Um, I was the kid who always wanted to be jump the highest, run the fastest, be the smartest, do uh, be on top. And I um, I just I like sports, you know, sports um, gave me. Uh, I'm a comp com very competitive guy, very competitive. I, I like to I, I like to win, and when I when I lose, I go back to the board and find out how and why I lost. You know. Um, and so I, I started um, in junior high school playing flag, and then uh, not until tackle until high school. Okay, thanks. All right, Brandy, well, so, you kind of give us your insight and perspective. Well, I have a different perspective because I was the wife of a former player. I was also an athlete. Um, I was a horsewoman, a dancer. Um, growing up here on St. Pete Beach years ago, we were boogie boarding and trying to surf when we didn't have any waves. But um, I met my husband here when he was playing for Tampa. Unfortunately, um, his career ended after seven years, and he ended up completely disabled from football and at 30 years old. And mm. it, it was a perspective where I was thrown into the role of sole support of our family. I was uh, put into a different type of prospectus. And the thing that, and the reason of why I do what I do today is because we had no one to turn to. We, we didn't know what to do. How do, you, how do you transition when the shoulder pads and the helmets are gone and, and right. the whole family unit's lost in transition? So, you know, I'm looking at a different perspective of it. And, and what I try to do today is to try to reach out and, and help those players. And most importantly, um, the family unit has to be a part of that. Um, looking back at the, the, uh, the relationship and the wonderful man that I ended up marrying, uh, he did pass away seven years, almost eight years now with uh, chronic mm -hmm. traumatic encephalopathy. So we had a different perspective. Not only was he physically disabled from football, but he also ended up with the neurocognitive of stage three of CTE, and mm -hmm. which did progress. It didn't even show up for another 20 years after he left football. So um, in that perspective, and working with so many different families and players today, I, um, I really look at it in a different way than Marv does. But I was asking Marv about his passion because I know for my husband, 
um, when he passed away at his funeral, you know, the coach got, one of the coaches got up and said, you know, Jeff was a natural born athlete. That was his gift. That was his passion. And um, it didn't mean that once he left the game that he couldn't pursue and stay in, in sports in some way. And that's what I really try to work with with players transitioning. But without the family support, without the family unit, in most families that I have worked with today, they weren't professional athletes. They don't understand that the man has to go into his man cave and grieve because his identity has been stolen and given to somebody else overnight. They don't understand when, uh, when there the, becomes depression or financial difficulties. And, and what I had in our relationship too was a lot of family interference. And it is all about educating and then empowering and then the, the support after. So I look at it in a little bit different way. Thanks, Brandon. No. Jen, go ahead, Marv. Yeah, not really. I mean, I, I didn't love football. I did it okay. because it was, a, it was a vehicle that I could get uh, go forward with, going to college and make a little money. I hated football. <laughs> I played in, no, I didn't. I did. I did. I, I didn't tell everybody. But, you know, um, it, it was something that I would um, – um, I come off the field and I score a touchdown, score the winning touchdown, you know, and everybody's happy and all that. But I'm, 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 I'm thinking about, oh God, I didn't get hurt. I didn't get hurt. I didn't get hurt. Yeah. I yeah. didn't get hurt. Yeah. And, and, and I, like I said in the beginning, I wouldn't do it again ever. I wouldn't even let my kids play. I, I've never gotten married. That's why one of the reasons I'm happy. Silly. Jennifer, Perry, <laughs> let's have a conversation. Talk to it. I, I call um, Marv's uh, enchantment with being single uh, being ecstatically solo. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've been umpiring for 40 years. And umpires are subject to a lot of physical punishment also. We get hit by a lot of foul balls. I've had partners that have had to quit because they've taken a few too many knocks to the uh, mask. And it'll really ring your times uh, mm -hmm. pretty good. And concussions abound with plate umpiring especially. I mean, but you can get hurt just as easily on the bases, all of the torquing and twisting and... Umpiring is a lot more than just standing around on a dime and making the wrong call. Uh, contrary to what a lot of people believe, <laughs> we actually do move out there, even when you're working with the poor umpire system. So there's a lot of injury attached to being out there, and umpires that are able to sustain a long career are very, very fortunate, because I think that there are at least as many that have had to quit or give it up um, because they've gotten injured and just can't come back. And I've gotten injured plenty, but fortunately, um, I've always managed to recover. And, and I was very interested, Marvin, hearing you talk about your hyperbaric oxygen therapy because I had a broken wrist about 12 years ago and mm. something very mm. weird happened as a consequence of it. My entire body sort of went into sympathetic um, sick mode and, and I, I couldn't stand to be touched my skin became very sensitive I ached for e all the time and until I started going to a clinic in New Jersey like you three times a week to get hyperbaric oxygen therapy yeah. I was going downhill and I'm I convinced that's what um, saved me and got me back on track was getting in that little chamber so, yeah, we're fortunate now that there are alternate therapies and that uh, we are not wedded to the, uh, the cut, um, take a drug or have a surgery type Hi, of paradigm. Um, very fortunate that there's information out there that we can access and, you know, people that we can go to and rely upon to have um, skill at applying these different therapies that aren't often applied. Um, right. So I'm very happy to hear that you you uh, got yourself out of you know that um, beeline heading towards um, serious mental you know uh, cognitive problems. So, but it's it's a big um, it's a big issue, and I'm very curious. Um, 
Marvin, how you reconcile your distaste for what football does to the human body with your platform as a former player who is looked up to by so many people because you played football. I, I'm just curious, what do you tell young kids who say, well, can you, you were great, I wanna be like you. Um, it must be a bit of a conflict for you to have to explain that. Yeah. Well, it's um, like I said uh, at the top, there's responsibilities, you know. It's yeah. responsibilities. If you want to go and, and get involved, this is what's going to happen. But um, and, and telling kids, I, I tell them it's it's a great to, it, it's a great um, 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 transport to take you from one place to another. That's if you exactly. want to do it. Yeah. And it's yeah. uh, it's it calls for a lot of uh, determination. You gotta want to be the best. And I, and, and I think and during my time, I was the best. I was the best. Well, yeah. John Mackey, you probably never heard of him, but he was, <laughs> uh, John was a little, a little faster than I was. But um, um, I, like I said, I, I'm so appreciative uh, that I am not in a wheelchair. Um, I'm yeah. like... Uh, I, I was going to, I live near the beach, so I'm, uh, believe it or not, I'm, I, I skateboard. I still. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great place to skateboard down there. Too. Welcome, Walter Briggs. Hey, Walter. <laughs> but but the, the bridge, uh, the beaches are closed now. But um, it's, um, um, it, it's, it's a life. I mean, there's every little kid wants to be the star, wants to win the game, wants to make the basket, wants to want to do this. And it's yeah. nice, but everybody has something that they have special. Everybody's special. Right. If they find that specialness within themselves, they can do it. I mean, uh, everybody has it. And, you know, yeah. um, I, 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 be, I became, I think... a, I became a, um, an agent for a while for some players. And I went to meet this one player, and I said, why do you want to play football? You should be an actor or something like that, you know? I, I noticed the way how people saw you and treated you. And lo and behold, I got him to play a couple years. And then after that, he called me and says, Marvin, I, I've written a couple things. Um, it's going to be on television. I, I've, gone, mm -hmm. I've been to a number of his openings because he said he always wanted to be an actor, but now he's in – He's um, not in front of the camera. He's in the back of the camera now. Yeah. And so, but, it but really then is I, yeah, it really I, is exactly what you're saying, Marvin, is finding, then re revamping, refining those passions and those gifts and, and then creating a new mindset and, and working out that passion in whatever field and uniqueness that we all have. Like you said, we're all so uniquely different and we all have special gifts that are only given to us. And then it's up to us to figure those out and, and be able to find it. I still love the game of football, by the way. I love it. I'll always love it. I love all sports. So, but um, I was surprised to hear you say you hated football. I was surprised to hear you say that after 12 years in the league. But. Um, that's with a capital H, hate. <laughs> I know now. <laughs> Walk the break. Go ahead. Hey, Have a hey guys. Say something. Now How's everybody? Can you hear me? We hear you clear as a bell. We can all see right. you do all that, that fancy, dancy stuff going on. So tell oh us your perspective God. where you're at. You got three hey, minutes. Everybody, Marvin, everybody, please forgive my tardiness. Um, this is Walter Briggs from the New York Jets. And I agree with Marvin. I don't even watch no damn football no more. <laughs> Being the first black <laughs> quarterback of the New York Jets and such, I've been taking so much hit. We're all suing. The NFL for CTE, I can't remember the last hit I got, but I bet you I don't want to throw another football. I don't want to – if I look at it, it's because my, my, my nephew is Ezekiel Elliott from the, the Dallas Cowboys, but I watch him and I'm not being prejudiced or what I'm, I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen with Tom Brady moving forward with Tampa Bay Buccaneers and such. But uh, I'm in my studio. Um, I, I, I Just like you said, Marvin, uh, I own my own production company, my own cigar brands, my own uh, my own foundation, Hanson Hutchnick Care. All we do is give money back to 
the food banks all over the country and so on. And I got a lot of celebrities behind me. You guys remember me from All the Right Moves with Tom Cruise. I co-starred in that movie on Broadway. And, and then you remember me from The Cosby Show. So what? Who cares? What matters is what we do now. Sports right. is behind us. I can't do nothing else. I can't do nothing. All I can do, and I promise you, in this pandemic, you know what I've noticed? One thing about the sportsman in person inside of me is that I found out how much I love my wife. I'm having, <laughs> I'm having a good time with this crazy woman. Brother, I choke her. I thought you the one crazy one, not her. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Life of sports was great. I thank God for the ability. I really do. But now is what I'm doing is what matters. And that's where right. I think all of you wonderful people on here are so fantastic. And Marvin, don't think nobody remembers you, man. Don't, don't come on now. Don't do that. <laughs> we all remember Marvin. Uh, Thank you. I had a, a great stint with the NFL, but prior to that, all the movies and television and Broadway stage, my life is today. Who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow? Right. We've lost seven people in Four weeks, we've lost seven people, family and friends in this family, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. And you all wow. know my story from my ex-wife dying of Lou Gehrig's disease. It doesn't take a disease or a virus. It takes what you do to prevent it. And right now, we have to be cognizant of the face Amen. Now. Wash your hands. And please, please donate to our foundations. Hands and heart I'm going to throw that in, Reggie. Shut up. All right, throw that in there. <laughs> Jay, you'll get a commercial later. Jen, give us a little insight. You're the only one that's being quiet. Okay, yeah, so I had Perry grab. So I, I know what you guys have experienced firsthand. Uh, this is the ball from USC my dad played, and this is from the 1962 NCAA championship that they won. So look at the ball. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I love what you guys are saying uh, that, you know, uh, you guys have become such the voice of courage and hope. That's what we're seeing. I'm the president of the Association of Professional Ballplayers of America, and what we are seeing, uh, it's uh, an organization that was formed in 1924, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig uh, helped form it. And we deal mostly with baseball players, but we have been connecting uh, with Reggie and all professional athletes uh, because all professional athletes uh, want to be a part of what we've been doing with baseball players. And then we have found the Hollywood celebrities, the rock stars, uh, and especially what you guys have seen. Everybody wants the ball players, So... It's amazing uh, what we have witnessed that everybody now in this new landscape are combining and joining forces to become this tremendous uh, force for good. So it's so incredible that baseball players and the NFL and veterans and first responders and so many uh, in our society do suffer from head injuries and CTE. It's a huge impact uh, with the homeless. So wow. the... Um, the therapies that you were mentioning, we love that it's the professional athletes now who are bringing these forward because they found what genuine healing modalities were working and bypassed. Now we can see with such clarity how corrupt our medical system and you know how many times money has been put be before living your best life or happiness or, or our health. So we love that in combining all these forces, we've created this think tank brainstorming effect. And now we have the hyperbaric oxygen, the microcurrent therapy, that's a FDA approved, that's a microcurrent electric electricity. Which I'm living proof works. <laughs> yeah, it, and the infrared uh, light, uh, you know, that was at uh, your last get together, Reggie, um, the stem cells. We last year were able to bring uh, stem cells for free, the $10,000 treatments to 25 families. We want to continue that. So because those who need the stem cells can't afford them. And so we want to bring huge philanthropy united together to drive the price down. Um, and then there's also a sound therapy uh, that's in Southern California. And Reggie, I'm going to connect you with this uh, gentleman as well. It's a doctor. They're using sound therapy where it makes the brain listen to itself and then it, it will uh, repair and heal. So it's just so incredible that now with what 
uh, you know, how much uh, society has transformed in just the past few weeks that we, you know, there's good and bad and everything. And despite the tragedy and, and devastation, we're seeing such genuine good. And look at all of you guys standing up and, and using your efforts for good. And I love uh, your messages for the youth that you have the courage to, uh, to be real. That was the last part. Our part that we have found is that so few uh, professional athletes, especially men, um, it's it, it very frightening to them to be, uh, to remove the masks, to be real and vulnerable. Um, I love how you come out and say, I hate football and, you know, unabashed and, and you know, you say it like it is. I read a quote that says, uh, there are two forms of courage in this world. One demands that we jump into action with our armor on. The other demands that we strip ourselves bare naked and surrender. Bravery is a curious thing. And so we're encouraging with everybody that, you know, we're really genuine, our masks are off, and we tell it like it is. And I think that is so good for the youth to see that, you know, nobody's putting on fronts. We, and you were talking about, you know, financial uh, depression and I, I think it's just so empowering and that we can really support everybody when we can see everybody with such clarity. So that's our message is that we want real genuine and we can be this, uh, all of you guys, the professional athletes can be the voice of courage and hope. The masses need to hear you now and especially the youth and everyone's right for the pickings now that everyone's home. So I love that we're doing things like that because we can really get the spotlight on the good that, that needs to happen going forward. And uh, hey, Reggie, until oh, yeah. Jennifer connect with that doctor, um, uh, who does the mm -hmm. sound therapy? My suggestion would be just to put on a John Prine recording because that'll make your brain listen to itself too. Oh, we so. just lost our buddy. We just lost our buddy, John Prine. And um, uh, also, um, Jennifer, after I have been, I'm also chapter engagement coordinator for our NFL alumni Tampa Bay chapter here. And I have been working with New Life Regenerative Medicine here in the Tampa Bay area. And they have uh, locations uh, with orthopedic doctors all over the country and we're just putting together a national um, endeavor for um, free stem cell therapy for our NFL alumni members and um, I personally have had the stem cell therapy I'd already had it um, with uh, Dr. Dennis Locks here in Clearwater um, Ian Beckles and Derek Brooks had referred me over to him and it's been a year and a half and I had my hip and um, I had three injections in my hip, two hip joints because I did kickboxing and then my shoulder and wow. uh, a number of other players go through new life. They're not, I did bone marrow, which was a little bit more painful, but um, the new life is using placenta and other, other avenues. And a lot of our players here have had very good luck, which is how I ended up getting them up to corporate. So um, it might be another avenue that we could chat after. We might be able to get New Life involved to where there would be no cost, um, maybe joining your organization. So, which is what we've kind of done with them. Well, you know what? I'm going to jump in there for one second, Reggie. Go ahead. Um, guys, and I thank you guys for the encouragement because I'm about to come to tears. Uh, because we, we did so much for my ex-wife, <clears throat> Deborah's Journey Foundation for Life, because she had Lou Gehrig's disease. And we raised over $50,000 to go to Tijuana, Mexico. We stayed in San Diego and such. And that was back ten to eight years ago and such. And uh, it cost us that much money. And I raised it all through the NFL Players Association and so on, as well as all of my golf tournaments and such. So what you guys are doing, and you can get stem cell for free, encourages me and what we are going through now. Because when it costs so much money, and there's no way you can get around the cost. No right. way back then you can get around that cost. But we got through it, and and uh, I got my NFL grant through the Gene Upshaw grant and such. So right now, and thank you so much for what you're doing in Tampa Bay. Uh, uh, as I told you, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with you guys, and I'm loving the opportunity to understand um, where it is that decision was made. But I'm promising you, guys, this is not something that isn't for real. It's tangible. You could touch it. And I had to one-up you. Um, God, Jen, is that her name? I have my game yeah. ball. <laughs> I got my game ball. Uh, 
So I wanted to show you that. And look, I got to make you laugh. I got to make you laugh as I fix my microphone in my studio. This is my helmet from my last year. And my last year, I can't even fit it. Look. <laughs> this is my last helmet. <laughs> oh, you are silly. Oh, my God. I had to make you. Somebody told me I was a trip with no luggage. Well, here I am. Because Reggie Grant did this. Reggie Grant, blame it on him. All but right, so guys, we're going to try to keep this succinct and uh, under 40 minutes. We'll do this again next month. All five of you, or four of you, or the five of you, I'd love to come back again and we continue to do this maybe on a monthly basis. Yeah. And just provide some information we can push out there and let guys know that they are not alone. Their family members know that they're not alone. There's somebody out there that's, that's doing things that could be a resource. So we're going to go right around the room. This kind of gives a, your name, your website, and then uh, so we can have somebody contact you. And we'll make sure we put that all at the end of the, the, the Zoom meeting as well. And this will be accessible. We'll be recording this, and we'll push it out there starting tomorrow. Brandy, go ahead. Uh, Brandy Winans. My email is livespeaker at AOL.com, brandywinans.com. Just Google me. Uh, published author, uh, go to Amazon Kindle. Continuing to work with our players and families probably till my last breath. So. Thank you. Walter. Hey, guys. Real quick. Uh, uh, my email address is uh, 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 HHTC, the number four, the number four, caregivers.org. And you can go to handsandheartsthatcare.com and, and, and WRB group. Uh, uh, you can Google it and such. And uh, I'm challenging all of you because I'm raising so much money, and Reggie, be quiet. I'm raising so much money for all these foundations. I'm challenging you guys to go on and help me feed these food banks here. I live in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia. But uh, guys, please, and Marvin, I know you. So, so please, come on, help a brother out. Help a brother out, and my wife and I, and you guys, and the bad part about it, you got a Rolls Royce picture behind you. So I know what's going on. I know what you're doing, Yoey. You've never been married, that's why. Marv, save us. Marv. <laughs> Marv Fleming. Hey, believe it or not, Jennifer and I are not sitting in front of an actual forest. <laughs> oh, you got, a, you got a green screen? <laughs> yeah, we did. We, we bought a sheet. We have a green sheet. <laughs> well, we have a whole studio here. We have a green screen. I'll make you look better than you think you do. <laughs> well, I'm in my crazy office here, and it's and it's crazy because I've been remodeling, so everything's piled everywhere. <laughs> it still looks great. Marv? Marv yeah, oh, so anyway, my, um, I'm, I'm looking at my, um, <laughs> yes. At my email, it's uh, M Fleming at playerscongress.com. Yeah, that's how you can meet me, and that's how you can get hold of me. But the thing is, I really want to push is hyperbaric oxygen. I mean, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. That's my story, lady. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's it for me. Hi. <laughs> Thank, thank you, everybody. So my name is Perry Barber. That's Perry, like Perry Mason, if you remember the, the old TV show, P-E-R-R-Y. My last name is Barber, like Red Barber. And you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and also at IWBC4, the, letter, uh, the number for me uh, on Twitter. That's my organization, the International Women's Baseball Center. And we're raising money to build a girls and women's baseball museum and to create programs to draw girls and women to the baseball diamond so that they learn how to play, coach, umpire, administer, participate in any way that they want to, and also to, to give them a safe space to learn about ways to stay healthy and to uh, reach out and be leaders in their communities and their school groups. So um, I, I thank 
very much, Reggie, for giving me a platform that I otherwise would not have because umpires labor in obscurity and we kind of like it that way. Um, when people notice us, it's usually because we've done something wrong. So I appreciate <laughs> your giving me the, the chance to uh, talk to everybody here. <laughs> hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. We got flags all over the field. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and you know what? It's a baseball town in this area. If you lived in Clearwater, you know we're we've been a baseball town since I was growing up here with the Mets. So you know we got baseball everywhere in the Tampa Bay area, from the Detroit to Lakeland to Port Charlotte to Timbuktu and back. Uh, five teams here oh, that I know. Can play. So it's great. I know. I, I, when I started umpiring, you had the Reds. Um, the uh, who else was there? The uh, Blue Jays, the Phillies, Blue Jays, the, the Phillies, Yankees, uh, yeah. Detroit, um, the Mets, uh, right, right. yeah, 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 and the yeah. Yankees. They were all, the yeah, yes. So, thank oh, you. Here's Jennifer, she's here. going to tell you. I'm glad you mentioned the Mets, that's her team. So, uh, we are the Ball Players Association. Our website is AP bpa.org you can google us ball players association we're on facebook instagram uh twitter and um i want to say thank you so much reggie and perry and brandy and uh god uh everybody who's been on here uh we've got marv and walter um we're so so grateful for your messages of encouragement and hope it's it's really uh, wonderful to see everybody standing up uh, to bring good to the masses and to those who need it the most. And like we were saying, those who couldn't afford it otherwise. Together we are so powerful and united and that's how we can drive prices down and that's how we can move mountains. So Together but six feet apart. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and she wants to show you Harry's party trick that she learned. Watch this. When she sits uh -huh. her mug, she disappears. Right. This is so rad. Watch this. I've seen oh, that. Yeah, yeah that's wild. <laughs> Reggie, thank you so much for having that's me on great. as well. And I'm also oh on Facebook, and Twitter, and all kinds of things. So y'all can that. That's hysterical. I saw you do that about four times too. <laughs> oh my god! All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I'll send you a Zoom connection next month. I'm Reginald Grant. You can find me at reginaldgrant.com. Or you can also uh, go to playerscongress.com and uh, get one of those new when football was football t-shirts. Marv did a great commercial for them. So again, playerscongress.com is where those t-shirts are. And I'm Reginald Grant, the impact of health on families and professional athletes. And we're all trying to make a positive difference. We'll see you next month, guys. Have a great week and great month. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay safe, guys. Be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.